Yeah, it's, uh, John, you, you mentioned being a swing state, but people, I wouldn't say people, I, I believe polling shows, and there's some people who know what they're talking about that think Wisconsin is the most vulnerable. Not that he'll lose, not that Biden will lose it, but that if he's going to lose one of those big three, they think Pennsylvania and Michigan are much more safe than Wisconsin. So definitely a pivotal city. But John, he's he's shown a history for people who don't know, because we've, we've talked about Trump for so long now. He has a history of bashing black cities in what can be red states, right? He bashes Philly all the time. He bashes Detroit, Chicago, um, it was Milwaukee obviously has a heavy black, black population. So he does this. It's obviously racial and it's obviously because the city, the, the city is not going to vote for him and the city tends to uh, pull the state hopefully. But my, my biggest reaction comes from it. First of all, I think there was reporters there. I think Jake Sherman was like basically live tweeting it like it was a basketball game. I think there was yeah, like so- there's someone in the room that's either yeah. calling and leaving the phone open or giving them blow by blow. Yeah, Jake Sherman had like verbatim quotes. So it wasn't like he was like uh, hypothesizing. So also what's funny about it is I, it has to be recorded. Like somebody in there had to have their phone open recording it. So there has to be some sort of evidence. But here's why I know he said it is because – Republicans weren't denying he said it. They were just, they were changing what he was talking about. One Republican said it was about election fraud. One Republican said it was about crime. One Republican said it was about the fact that um, they had a rigged election. Like they were changing why he said it. In reality, he said Milwaukee is a, but this is what happened with, he called African countries should hold nations and all this other stuff. So bashing First of all, it's bad to bash a city that you need to win a state. It's also bad when it's the state that's holding your convention. I mean, I don't think we're going to see the protests that we're going to see at the DNC. I, mean, I don't know. I don't see why not. But at the end of the day, this is just... Well, let me ask you this, John. Not to be a cynic or anything, but this isn't going to necessarily swing anybody, right? But do you think it helps remind people i've been following polling closely i've sent you a few tweets and we'll see in two weeks now i think we'll see the biggest hopefully the biggest shift in polling because of the debate i think democrats are banking on that trump hasn't been in the spotlight enough and the more he gets in the spotlight the more people are reminded that he's on the ballot and the more people are reminded that he's on the ballot the, the more the more they'll vote for democrats right so do you think that this is one of the the bigger moments where all right he's back on the ballot? You got this, you got he's doing campaign uh, stops now, and then then you have the convention, this, the, the convention, the debates, all of that. I think will help push um, this to the forefront. Yeah, you know, well, <clears throat> I think here here's the challenge that we have, and it's because you we, you know we have some things we're trying to talk about now, but we also want to. Um, you know, look at the bigger picture. And when you see him make a mistake like he did, well, maybe it wasn't a mistake in, in, in saying what he said about Milwaukee. Um, there are, these become a stack of liabilities, a stack of liabilities that are going to catch up to him at some point in time, right? And more importantly, you know, and, and what's good is more and more people, even some in the media now, are starting to call out the, you know, Trump says crazy stuff and no one really you know, has these serious discussions about his cognitive ability and Biden, you know, and let's not even talk about the fact that there was uh, one uh, edited video out of Normandy when Biden was, it looked like he was looking for a seat when realistically he was waiting for Lloyd Austin to finish speaking. And then this week uh, when they were in uh, at the G7, uh, the whole parachute story that both the RNC and then uh, the New York Post picked up on and, 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 and led. I I think that there's some blatant efforts to keep the race close that while we don't want to overstate and say, oh, granted, we got him because he went ahead and called Milwaukee horrible. I think this stuff's going to start piling up on him. Uh, you know, there's are, aren't we seeing more and more evidence, and I think you're the one who said you need maybe a week or two, more and more evidence that this conviction is literally uh, hurting him. It is literally, it's beginning to hurt him. And and the thing is, is that <clears throat> there's everything's framed, 
right? Everything is framing. And they, they always say, well, it shows that he's not going to lose a lot of votes. It's not about the, it, we know his base is not going to abandon him. We know that. But there's a lot of people outside of his base that he needs to win. And so it's not that it's going to lose him votes that he has. It's going to potentially make it harder for him to pick up the votes that he doesn't. And, 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 and I think that's where the challenge lies for him. 1,000% agree. And then just to hammer home my point, it's to remind people that he's there. I think it's hard to imagine because we're so in it, but there's people who just don't know that he's up, he's running again, right? They're going to start seeing ads soon enough, and he'll start being in the news a lot more. But there's people who just think Biden's running against whoever, right? And so I think this the conviction that day was a big moment for him as far as like getting in the news more. I think the debates will be the next one and the convention will be the last one. The combination of those three events, and keep in mind the actual sentencing happens right around the convention as well, that put them at the forefront and remind people wholeheartedly. So, look, if it's – but but also polling shows – again, I'm not, I'm not saying that – what people are predicting as far as polling is that it will be a less turnout – It'll look more like 2016 than it will 2020. And I actually believe that because 2020 was such a pivotal moment in our country. I'm not saying one way or the other as far as who's winning. Um, I'm just saying I think it'll be a lower turnout. And usually that's not great for Democrats. But can you can you turn it into a higher turnout than expected if you get him in the news more? So it's almost like if Trump – I know Trump people, Trump people made fun of Biden for being in the basement in 2020. But – if you put Trump away, you probably have a better chance, right? The more he's out there, the more likely that someone who wasn't planning on voting is going to vote against him. So, um, yeah, you're right. This isn't going to win anybody over, but it also will push Democrats, hopefully, to vote more. 